I now invite John Bullygate Stearnation to deliver his address. city. Now these buildings should be the pride of every South African. But over the past decades, these buildings have come to mean something very, very different. It's inside these buildings that the ANC created and executed the plans that have built the world's highest unemployment rate. They've unleashed from those buildings violent criminals on innocent people and they used those buildings to capture the state. Pansy ANC! Pansy! It is inside these buildings that the dreams of millions of hopeful people, including Tinswalo, were betrayed. They were betrayed in those buildings. These same buildings that once served as a symbol of hope when President Nelson Mandela took his oath of office here have under the ANC been reduced to a crime scene. They are a crime scene. So we are not here today, Democrats, by accident. Our meeting here today is a signal of intent. The Democratic Alliance is launching our 2024 manifesto from the union buildings because we today are sending a clear message that in this election, we are in it to win it. That in this election, we must rescue the union buildings from the clutches of a corrupt government and we must restore them to their rightful place as a symbol of pride for all South Africans. In every election before this one, everybody knew that the ANC would win. The only question was by how much. As a result, in every previous election, the DA's primary task was to consolidate the strongest possible opposition to the ANC, to prevent the worst from happening to our country. 
But Democrats, I'm here to tell you that all of that changes today. Because today we embark on a new path and towards a new objective. In this election, the DA isn't going to oppose the ANC. In this election, the DA is going to defeat the ANC. <clears throat> for the first time in our democratic history, support for the ANC is set to drop below 50%. It is a party of the past, a party in the terminal decline, being ripped to shreds from all sides. The truth is that the ANC was already on its knees before Jacob Zuma's MK party entered the fray. And as we speak here today, MK is devouring millions of ANC votes. And the ANC only has one man to blame for its demise, and that man is Cyril Ramaphosa. Because for decades, he did everything in his power to enable and protect Zuma. Ramaphosa even freed 15,000 criminals just to keep Zuma out of jail. But today, that very same Zuma is helping to evict Ramaphosa from the union buildings behind me. The demise of the ANC has now vullied a gate for the DA to achieve what was once considered unthinkable, to be able to be a party of national government. In this election, for the first time ever, the DA has a clear path to victory. Now, many of you were at our Federal Congress in April last year, when I first announced the DA's commitment to the formation of a moonshot pact to rescue South Africa. Do you remember that at Congress? We were excited about the future because by bringing an end to opposition infighting and consolidating like-minded parties into a cohesive block, this formation, which is now known as the multi-party charter for South Africa, offers South African voters the best prospect for political change since 1994. And the DA feels a profound sense of responsibility towards the Charter. Given our size, given our proud track record of clean and accountable government, and our success in delivering services and jobs where we govern, the DA is now committed to becoming the strong, stable anchor party at the heart of a new multi-party government to rescue South Africa from the ANC and build a new future. <clears throat> but in the DA, we don't just seek power for power's sake. For the DA, winning elections and entering government is the means to an ultimate end. And that ultimate end is to serve all of the people of South Africa by making their lives better. And that is why I am proud today to launch the DA's rescue plan for South Africa, our manifesto for the historic 2024 election. And this manifesto is the outcome of the most comprehensive policy-making process in the history of our party. It's built upon a raft of updated policies that we all adopted as a party since 2019. And in this election, a vote for the DA is a vote for a party with a clear plan to rescue South Africa. tenant in a new multi-party government, the DA's key priorities during the 2024 to 2029 term will be to 1. 
create 2 million new jobs for South Africans. Two, to end load shedding in South Africa and end water shedding. Number three, halve the rate of violent crime, including murder, attempted murder, and gender-based violence. Four, crush corruption by abolishing cadre deployment in favour of merit-based appointments and a capable state that delivers for all South Africans. Five, lift six million South Africans out of poverty. Six, triple the number of grade four learners who can read for meaning. And finally, seven, ensuring quality health care for all South Africans. Those are seven great things. <clears throat> now, unlike most other parties, we're going to come and promise you the sun, the moon and the stars. The DA's rescue plan is not pie in the sky. Because it's easy for parties to come and stand before you that have no track record in government to get up and read out a list of impossible promises that they could never implement and never fund. But you know what? South Africans are tired of empty promises. They are tired of hearing about bullet trains when the trains that they used to take to work no longer run. They are tired about industrialization plans when the factories that they used to work in have closed due to load shedding. They are tired of hearing about smart cities when they don't feel safe on the streets of their own cities where they live. So what the DA offers you today are not populist promises, but solemn pledges. We will focus our time in government like a laser beam on implementing these key seven pledges, because we understand that if you don't fix these key seven pledges, South Africa does not have a future. So unlike the President's desperate efforts to whitewash his government's failures, the DA's manifesto is rooted in the reality of what South Africa is in 2024, not what it promised to be in 1994. In 1994, our South African dream was for a country where the lives of this generation would be better than the lives of their parents and that their children's lives would be even better still. But in 2024, the nightmare that confronts us is that the lives of our children could be much, much worse than our own. Because the ANC has so utterly betrayed our nation that we are now further away from fulfilling the dream of 1994 than in any other time in our democratic history. On Thursday, Ramaphosa used a handful of successful young people to try and defend his claim that South Africa is some kind of heaven on earth for Tinswalo in South Africa and her peers born after 1994. Now don't get me wrong, I salute each and every one of those young people for helping to build South Africa. But the cold hard truth is that young people in this country do not succeed because of the ANC, they succeed in spite of the ANC. So, if Ramaphosa wanted to honestly reflect on the lives of our young people in South Africa, then for every three employed people, he would show us the seven who have never had a job in their lives. If he was not trying to deceive us, he would admit that every five young people that finish matric, there are five others who failed or never even made it to matric. If he was honest about crime in this country, he would acknowledge that under his watch, the dead bodies of people murdered would fill the FNB stadium twice over. Panzi ANC, Panzi.
After all of the damage and destruction wrought during the 15 wasted years under Zuma and Ramaphosa, the 2024 election is sadly not yet about fulfilling our dream of 1994. Instead, this election is about survival, the survival of our South African dream. It's also a shame that the ANC only chose to focus on Tinswalo. No matter what your age, no matter what your name is, no matter where you come from, I want to say to you that over the past 30 years, we have all grown up as democracy's children. But we should not be too surprised that the President excluded from his speech Auntie Fatima from El Dorado Park, Farmer Johan from Citrus Dal, and Kishav, the entrepreneur from Chatsworth. After all, this is the same man who deliberately excluded Drikus Duplessis from his recognition as our country's first ever mixed martial arts champion, purely because he refuses to keep quiet about the ANC's corruption. Drikus, the DA salutes your courage, inside and outside the octagon, just like we salute Bafana Bafana, the Springboks, our under-19 cricketers, and Sibinati Nonchinga, who yesterday won the World Boxing Junior Flyweight title. We salute all of you. And wanneer ons binnenkort is in regering, gaan ons vir jou en al ons sportshelde die erkenning gee wat jou toekom. Want die ANC weet nie wat ons weet nie. My fellow South Africans, the only way to keep our South African dream alive is by creating millions of more jobs, including for our young people. The only way to keep our dream alive is by ending load shedding and water shedding and by winning the war on crime. The only way to keep our dream alive is by abolishing the evil and corrupt system of cadre deployment, which locks qualified people out of jobs and destroys service delivery. The only way to keep our dream alive is by lifting millions of people out of desperate poverty in which they still language to create schools that teach our children and to build hospitals that heal the sick. And the DA is the only party with a proven track record and ability to deliver on these pledges. Where we govern in the Western Cape, eight out of 10 people are employed and we create more jobs there than any other province. Where we govern in places like Cape Town, we are already reducing load shedding while providing the cleanest drinking water and the best sanitation services in the entire country. Recently, the DA rolled out a groundbreaking new initiative that enables any household with solar panels and a bi-directional meter to become not a consumer, but a prosumer by being able to sell electricity back into the grid. And it's this same policy that sits at the heart of our manifesto's solution to load shedding for the whole of South Africa. We won't just do it in Cape Town when we're in the union buildings, we'll do it in every town and city across the country. And mark my words, mark my words today that the DA's work in Cape Town and the Western Cape is going to lead an energy revolution in this country and it will be thanks to the implementation of DA policies. Where we govern, where we govern Democrats, we've also enhanced local policing through the LEAP program that has reduced violent crime by up to 40% in the most dangerous neighbourhoods in the country. And even before we've entered national government, the DA is already abolishing cadre deployment. Whether Cyril Ramaphosa and Gwede Mantashe like it or not. And today, I have some breaking news to share with you. 
So listen properly. I've got some great news. And you heard it here first. As you all know, the Constitutional Court has given the ANC until Monday to hand over their skellum cater deployment records, dating back to the 1st of January when Ramaphosa became the chairman. Now, after delaying it for more than three years following the DA's initial request for these records to be made public so that we can expose Ramaphosa's role in state capture, the ANC yesterday came crawling back to the DA and they said, please, please, we need more time. Should we give them more time? Should we give them more time? No, no! I agree with you. So I'm going to go right back to them and say to them directly, no, you cannot have more time. You cannot have more time no. in government. And you cannot have more time to hand over these records. You've wasted South Africa's time for long enough. And we're going to say to them, you will comply with the Constitutional Court ruling or we will make sure that all of you go to jail for the contempt of court because that's where they belong. Not in the union buildings, they belong in jail. And we will use the precedent created that sends Zuma back to court and to jail, which includes prison time to prove it. The ANC is so desperate to hide their cater deployment secrets that they are now threatening to trigger a constitutional crisis to protect Ramaphosa, just like they did with Zuma. So the DA doesn't just talk about fighting corruption and building a capable state. Despite not even being in government yet, the DA is already doing more to rescue the state from total collapse than any other party in this country. My fellow South Africans, built upon our track record, the DA's rescue plan for South Africa will shine a bright light in an array of incredible spotlight into the darkness that threatens to blind us as a country. Now, let me be honest, it's not going to solve all of our problems overnight because our problems in South Africa are many. But what these seven key pledges will do is restore our country back onto the path of promise and give us the permission to once again believe in our great South African dream. So instead of a government that tells you that it's not the end of the world, when load shedding makes you unemployed or destroys your business, you can vote for a new government that ends load shedding. Instead of a government with a cowardly leader who's probably busy shredding the rule of law alongside the cater deployment secrets as we speak, you can vote for a new government with a zero tolerance for corruption. Instead of a government that normalizes gender-based violence gang violence and farm murders, you can vote for a government that respects and values our women, our children, that fights gangsterism and which protects our farmers. As I speak to you today from the seat of national government, I can say unequivocally the DA is ready to take our rightful place in the union buildings. And Make no mistake about this, the ANC knows it too. This past week in Parliament, they told us that the moonshot is their biggest fear. They were so obsessed by the moonshot that some of them were shouting, Dubula in Yanga. And let me tell you, Dubula in Yanga. That's exactly what we're going to do in this election, Dabula in Yanga. Because we've got the size, we've got the people, we've got the experience, we've got the track record, and we have the plan to rescue this beautiful country before it's too late. And 
These aren't empty words. They're not empty words. The DA is present in every town, in every village, and every city across this country. And we are led by the strongest leadership collective in our party's history. And I'd now like to invite onto the stage our federal leadership. Let's give them a round of applause. Our premier candidates, our provincial leaders, our deputy leaders and chairpersons, and members of our federal executive. Let's give them a round of applause. to Tinswalo, I say to Fatima, I say to Johan, and I say to Keshav, I say to all of you, help is on the way. Yeah. Yeah. If you want the DA's rescue plan to sit at the heart of a new multi-party government, then you must vote for the DA to carry this plan into that government. If you want to rescue South Africa, from unemployment, from load shedding and water shedding, and from crime, corruption, and poverty, and hunger, and from failing schools, and from broken hospitals, then you must vote for the DA. Yeah. If you want to rescue the union buildings behind me from the corrupt clutches of those who've plunged our country into hardship, then you must vote for the DA. So, Come on, Mr. President, stop cowering away. Call this election because the DA is ready to fight so that yeah. South Africa can win. The 2024 election manifesto of the Democratic Alliance, delivered there by its leader, John Vuligate, as uh, Stian Hazen. And uh, as you were saying, I'm vularing the gate here to the building behind me. And uh, I must say, there was a million dollar shot in there somewhere uh, just to bring that to life. Zoi? 
to basically be symbolic about what their intent is that is marching into the union building. Dr. Uh, Donald, what did you make of it overall? The uh, speech of the leaders, yeah, it was very aspirational. They've got big dreams, big hopes for these elections, but I remind them again, look at the election data. The enemy is not the ANC. The enemy is other parties that are fishing in the same electoral pool as the DA. Those parties are the Freedom Front Plus. It's the little good. It's also Action SA and it's also the Patriotic Alliance. Especially here in Kautek, we got Johannesburg, we got Swane, we got Ikaruleni and obviously Cape Town in the Western Cape. So I think that that message, that little message is misdirected. The DA needs to introspect. Uh, uh, the ANC is not the enemy. The enemy is, uh, you know, the enemy is those other four parties that, that they need to target because those four parties are taking away votes from the DA in the strongholds of the DA and those are the metros. Well, evidently, the focus was on the ANC. Um, you were counting how many times uh, there was actually mention made of the ANC, right? In fact, Solim Smang, the chair of the DA here in Kalpen, said they are not going to mention that other party, meaning the ANC. But guess what? The chairperson of the DA mentioned the ANC 10 times. And then came uh, the leader himself, John. He was doing the same. So clearly, you can see that what's bothering more is the ANC. But John has put it so eloquently that you may worry about the ANC. Worry about your own support. Your own support base is declining. So data is showing us that in order for you to walk into the union building, you need to be able to have solid support. If your support is shaky, you need to do more. So so just to sum up, the apex priorities of the DA as per this election manifesto, number one is to create two million new jobs and they do go on to explain in the manifesto how they intend doing this. They talk for example about a, a, a certificate that will be issued and this can be used and giving people more agency and taking them away for example uh, from uh, the, uh, col uh, the collective bargaining council that is SMMEs and giving individuals more agency to also step away from the minimum wage stipulations among others. Interesting reading this makes for ending load shedding and water shedding. So also using the Western Cape example of what they have been doing. They still speak to the unbundling of ESCOM a uh, greater importance placed on private sector um, support for that but of course also uh, John mentioned it it is about the, the consumer also being able to sell excess electricity back then half the rate of violent crime including murder attempted murder etc talking about the devolution of powers especially of the police and then abolish cadre deployment in favor of merit-based appointment they've been talking about about this quite a lot. Uh, lift six million people out of poverty again. The steps are there. They are. They need to be unpacked. Uh, triple the number of grade four learners who can read for meaning. And in all of this, the unions, they speak to the issue of the unions and how that may be hampering some of these objectives that we have as a nation. And finally, the seventh, the last apex priority is to ensure quality health care for all, irrespective of economic status, coming up with an alternative to NHI. But I thought it was very interesting, for example, when it came to higher education, the NASPA situation, whereas last week you heard the EFA talk about universal access to funding the DA are saying no actually everyone should pay a portion back of the money that they receive from the state so very noisy behind us we're gonna hand it back to studio that's uh, take it there from here at the Union buildings